Awesome. You know, sometimes your childhood fantasies come true. This is one of those times. We're going to instrument and data log the monster mud. This has been 40 years in the making. I'm Gail Banks, and let's have some fun uh, with Monster Trucks and Monster Jam. Monster Mutt's on the way to uh, show up in San Jose, and uh, they stopped by here with it for us to instrument and data log. But this all st started about 40 years ago. A guy named Bob Chandler called my shop down in San Gabriel, and uh, we were building turbocharged marine engines back then, doing hot rod engines, of course, been doing that since 1958, but we got into turbocharging in the late 60s, and about 10 years after that, Bob Chandler calls up, and he says to one of the sales guys, hey, uh, I'm doing these monster trucks, and I'm using Ford Power, and you guys build a twin turbo 460 Ford Marine engine. I want to put one of those in my truck. So the sales guys, you know, that was too high altitude for them, so they pushed it over to engineering. I try to hire engineers who are cool, engineer, engineers who turn wrenches. Uh, but back then, we, we had this guy, and he's the reason I try to hire engineers who are cool and can wrench. They transferred Bob Chandler to the engineering group, and this cat gets on the phone and he blows off Bob Chandler. He goes, we don't have an engine for you. This can't be done, sorry, dial tone. Some years later, Chandler told me the story because I didn't know that it ever happened. That was 1978. So here we are, 2018, 40 years later, uh, I'm finally getting my chance with a monster truck, and this is very cool. Uh, these guys are evolving. Their monster jam is worldwide. I mean worldwide. It's hard to believe how big this is. And while it's a show, the development of these vehicles astounds me. If you see the aerobatics that these guys do, and by that I mean it's like an airplane, they launch these pups and they're in the air doing things and uh, of course the mutt uh, is kind of banged up a little, gets ironed out between, uh, between meats, but uh, what these guys do today is astounding. The basic engine in one of these is a 540 inch big block Chevy running an 871 this one's out of the blower shop, which is kind of out here in California, I'm proud to say. Uh, and power numbers, I've heard around 1,200 horsepower. Pretty stout, pretty stout for some of you, you just abuse the hell out of. This ain't a drag race setup here. This is something where there's some pretty long, wide open throttle events. For a number of years, we've been working on this gauge we had this thing we called the IQ. It, start, it started out, we used a Palm PDA way back in the day and ran data to it, controlled tuning with it. Uh, this goes back like 20 years. Then we started making our own screens and we got up to a five inch screen, which is this big chunk that you mount in the vehicle. And I kind of went, you know what? Let's hold it right here. A lot of the stuff on the screen was just background. Guys were putting uh, all kinds of decorative stuff on the screen like that. Wait a minute, this thing is just to read data. So I, I kind of I went, everybody uses a two inch gauge or two and a 16th, 52 millimeter. That's very common. You can mount them anywhere. They don't take up much room. If you got this big screen mounted up above the dash, you're just kind of in your way. And I thought, let's, let's boil this thing down to 
I want a gauge that will re read off of anything, read off your OBD port, read off of sensors, uh, it will give you warnings, it'll do all kinds of functionality as well, but I want to put in a little uh, two inch, con 52 millimeter configuration. And while I was at it, I wanted to calculate stuff that's going on that's never been read on a gauge. New things, specifically my interest, which is supercharging, turbocharging, intercooling. My deal is forced induction. And the way we read stuff about forced induction on an instrument today, wow, is it antique. Just boost pressure is so antique. It doesn't tell you the whole story. But I'm not going to get too deeply into the gauges. I want to talk about what we're doing here. This is all about fingerprinting one of these things while it's in the air, while it's pulling we're going to measure the g-forces as well to get some idea of the dynamics because we're interested in doing a new engine configuration for these things. Uh, some guys have done these with diesels but the throttle response is part of the art of driving and operating one of these things and traditionally turbo diesels uh, are soft. I want to put a super turbo in one of these, but I want it to work right. So I want to know just how the th throttle response looks, just how the boost air density responds, how quickly the RPM changes once we've got it, and how we're going to get it is kind of the cool thing. We're coming out with a new I-1.8 Data Monster. That's actually our brand name that we came up with months ago. And isn't this kind of cool talking to you guys the first time about the Data Monster going on a monster truck? What the Data Monster does is everything that our I-1.8 Super Gauge does, but it, it is a killer data logger. Uh, you're able to put a uh, micro SD card in the front of it and it logs and you can then play back, which is happening right over here on these four gauges. The end gauge has the SD card plugged in. We're playing back a run that we did uh, on another vehicle on those four gauges. So you can log with this thing up to a hundred channels, a hundred different sensors, 10 times a second. Well, we're going to install one on the monster mutt and run the monster jam with it. Is that enough monsters for you? Uh, here's kind of the setup we're doing. First of all, I want to know about throttle position. So this is the sensor for the throttle position and this is called a string pot. This will attach to the throttle lever. This, this will attach to a bracket, which we've got to make. And this will tell me throttle position and it feeds right into the I dash loom. Then we get down into the intake manifold. I want to know about the ambient temperature, pressure, I want to know the ambient humidity, all that stuff. So I get that with, with what we call a uh, air mouse. And the air mouse is this little critter here that uh, you can mount where the air intake is. Uh, it's really good good in locating the sweet spot for your air intake, no matter, car, truck, monster truck, whatever you're doing. So there's your ambient, there's all the conditions you're starting with. We'll know then how much the supercharger increases the pressure, increases the temperature, because uh, we want to know the, the air density, the pounds of air per cubic foot we're putting in. Uh, we got to know the temperature and pressure we already know the humidity feeding into the system. So for pressure, uh, we've got a, a series of stainless steel pressure sensors that, that support this, this new uh, data monster setup. And they feed in along with, uh, we're using a thermal couple for the air intake temperature. 
it'll be beneath the blower in one of the ports. All that feeds, and here's an example of a couple of other temperature sensors, uh, all that feeds into one of our modules. This is a four channel analog module, so it'll do any zero to five volt setup, temperature, pressure, whatever you, whatever you want to do. And there's wire looms that connect. Here's a liquid temperature sensor. It's a thermistor. In terms of the engine, is engine RPM. Uh, this is our RPM sensor. Uh, and this is a signal conditioner for it. And that all feeds in uh, to the data stream. We're also using a three axis accelerometer. So it's gonna tell us how hard it's accelerating, how hard it's braking, how hard it's turning, and what is going on in the oil pan. Obviously, this is a dry sump thing. So there you have it. All the modules on this table feed into a gauge that you can buy for $379 and go to completely professional level. It'll work on any vehicle. So that's the future of instrumentation and data logging right there. The MUT is going to San Jose. You guys can watch for this online or you can go to San Jose and see the MUT run. I know we're gonna be there. So there'll be more about this project and there'll be more about everything I'm doing and everything the guys are doing here. I hope you enjoy these things. Stay tuned.